go through that same thing you every time you start a new with a You brand. can't stop with YouTube. YouTube, <laughs> yeah. that first year yeah. is, is a lot of 14 views, 20 views, 25 views. Yeah. And then after your content and you create a history, then it starts to take off. I took it. Was, Power the internet. Yeah, that's right. You can do pretty much anything. Um, dedicate some time. If you really want to be good at it, you'll get there for sure. All right, we're on a roll. So, Q, make the sound. Today we are with Mike Martin. Mike, um, tell me a little bit more about YouTube then. So, after you got started with the, the, the painting, yeah. what was getting you onto YouTube? Why did you start making videos? And how was that first, that first month of making videos on YouTube? It was weird. I guess transition where it was you know the the traditional forms traditional forms of internet entertainment Netflix things of that nature um, the spray paint art got me really interested in like pulling out of YouTube reading watching uh, learning checking out different videos different channels um, mostly for spray paint stuff so as I was building that up I actually stumbled across uh, like a van life channel, someone yeah. living out of a van and while wow, they don't pay rent, they have like hardly any costs and yeah. they're just traveling around. So that seed kind of got planted. I really started watching people like throughout months uh, in a row yeah, and yeah. kind of following their stories and subscribing to a channel. Watching like, the vlogs. Being, yeah, being an active kind of subscriber and uh, the spray paint thing was lining up and I was kind of getting exposure to maybe being a YouTuber is something that I could do. I don't yeah. see, you know, why not? What are these people doing that I'm not? Is simply just trying it and, and getting some content out there. So um, for me, the most logical was to do a spray paint video. Let's, yeah. let's film something and kind of looking at what they say is be an accessible, but kind of niche thing um, that would be in high demand compared to how much it's searched for. And yeah. uh, I had that checked off. It was a, it's a fairly PG channel for the most part. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not offensive and, and whatnot. So it was a, a pretty good cross section to, to maybe take a run at starting a channel and it started slow as it always does. So what was the first hundred subs like? What did it, what did it take to get to the first hundred subs? First hundred is as long as like, it's kind of told to be by yeah. everyone who goes through it. Um, it's, it's a it's, grind. It's a grind and you're like, you're putting it out and you're getting 14 views on a video and you're, man, you're, you're worried about, uh, you know, your edits. It takes so much effort, it's right? So you're much, just, yeah. you're shooting the video, you're editing it, you're doing the paintings yeah. and, and then 14 views. That's right. And I mean, you guys can relate with growing like oh. this or, or yeah. all the different social media outlets or taking a business who, who doesn't have that big standpoint. Like, do you guys go through that same thing you every time you start a new with you a brand. can't stop with youtube youtube <laughs> yeah. that first year yeah. is is a lot of 14 views 20 views 25 views yeah. and then after your content and you create a history then it starts to take off that's right but without the history it's tough yeah it is you have to get that that watermark of so many videos before that algorithm kicks and once you get that algorithm figured out it changes on you so it's it's constantly uh, a moving target and it's it can be a challenge for sure so the first hundred was a grind yeah. um and you, you start to be developing your editing skills. You're you're gonna only get good in front of the camera. I swear by with editing. practice. Yeah, and by <laughs> editing yourself <laughs> too, and yeah. watching all the ums and buts and mannerisms that you don't want uh, to go through to your. your We're doing that right now. Q, yeah. Every single time, Q and Sherman sit me down after the yeah. podcast, and we go we go and like, watch the different things. Here's what we have to work on. So, what's your biggest what's your biggest uh, go to? For these things that that's your biggest edit out moment oh man for me i was saying ums at the beginning a lot yeah. more so now there's a little bit of focus on it but i've kind of trained myself out of it it took uh, took 10 episodes yeah. took 10 episodes to start to understand how to talk and to guide the conversation absolutely so we, we still rely on cuta with some <laughs> editing magic but at that's the end it. of the day we want to keep it as live and real as possible absolutely so. yeah what was okay so after that when did it take off so once the algorithm kicked in what was the takeoff point where you go 100 it, subs and more yeah it was uh very basic very rudimentary videos filmed on a combination of 
uh, cell phone and a, a webcam and trying to have like a picture in picture while yeah. I painted just experimenting all over the place and, and trying different things with editing and how to have that final product feel a little more polished got into like very basic after effects stuff and, and throwing an intro on there so when I started to put the polish on the videos I said I got to do a proper tutorial like something yeah. that's like mapped out it was the first time i actually thought about what i was going to do before i did it yeah and, and presented that and it wasn't uh it wasn't even a th like in that hundred sub range they're all getting like all my videos were getting slow incremental uniform views and then yeah. that one tutorial video that i put you know Pops. a little more effort into it yeah it blew up to a degree yeah. um and that was the one that mainly got me traction and started having people come out of the woodworks and it became a recommended video on yeah. some of the more prominent spray paint artists. And then it's, yeah, it's slowly started to trickle in. Oddly enough, further down the road, um, when I kind of let my, my channel go static, it's yeah. when I had the most growth and I'm still kind of in that period and it's still going up. It's, it's a shame because if I had- But life, active, life takes over, right? Absolutely. So the YouTuber life is there, it's yeah. a grind, but- still got to make a living yeah so you haven't posted a video in a couple months yeah. what have you been up to and what's going to get you back to posting a couple more i think uh for me with with getting back into the swing it's it's tough because it's art yeah. um and one thing i find my wife's an artist as well and uh it gives you this high it gives you this creative feeling where everything's clicking everything you do you like uh, and then somewhere along the line, for no apparent reason, that drops off a cliff and you're, you're looking down the barrel of, um, I have no inspiration to do this. I'm forcing myself to do it and then the result is not giving me that, that feeling I want. So um, the ebb and flow of just creativity when it comes to something like painting um, and then the logistical stuff of getting it all set up, it's pulled me away. Um, been definitely career centric uh, for the past little bit. So that's the absolute main paradigm for shifting away from from youtube which is a very very small um at this point completely passive income yeah um definitely not enough to pay the bills but shifting the time that goes into that uh and and making that happen and making that machine grow a little bit more into something that's a little more directly um providing income and, and chasing you know the proper traditional career if you will i love it is are you going to get back to youtube or is yeah, right now so. pure focus career get that going and and then assess afterwards i hope so i i consider a lot of things with you know really going ham on youtube and being uh, super uh motivated and driven yeah. to do it to letting that kind of drop off it's uh it's a few things it's spray painting in canada's tough six months Seasonal. of the year yeah yeah um having the setup you know like a proper garage space and whatnot so it's my Part of me living situation or you know yeah. looking to buy my my house in the future here that could could get me back into it just a little more availability to do uh what i truly do love doing i, I like doing it but with you as doing doing social media always looking at it under kind of that lens do you find that like you get burnt out with the whole machine of social media and, and following the similar things well, or how do you pull out of that? there's so many platforms now and there's so many options and there's so many changes customers are skipping over content faster yep. and they're finding new ways to consume content and we have to always be ahead of that otherwise we're two steps behind yep. so as a youtuber you have to find a new way to present the video you have to find a new way to, to make sure the audience is watching it and your, your customer base, your audience base keeps growing. You have to Absolutely. feed them what they want. Yeah. And it consumes us, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of time. You can attest to how long it takes to shoot the video, make the video, post the video. For us, for clients, that's across the board. You gotta post across all platforms yeah. relating to the audience on each platform. And it's a grind. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It doesn't matter what it is, it, I think, one of the misconceptions is is millennials and people out there everyone thinks they can do social media mm -hmm. but when you really get into making good content it takes time and effort and resources absolutely and uh and sometimes i think it takes a while for people to realize that it does it takes it takes time to get your your legs both just logistically just, with equipment with how to film with how to do it but also to get your mind wrapped around like and what the, it actually takes to do it. The results aren't immediate either. No, they're not. Like with the first hundred subs, they don't come in right away. You have to stick to it. You gotta keep making content. Yeah. 
And in the long run, you build, you build your audience and you build your brand that's gonna stay with you your entire career. Yeah. You had a video that you guys had released about content recently. Um, Capitalize. Yeah. Anytime for a lot of people, we have to, because we don't have enough time, we have to capitalize as much as possible. Get the day-to-day, -day, be authentic. Yeah. Take content a couple times a week based on things you already do and make that content. And that was the hashtag capitalize on content video we put up. Yeah, and you guys touched on something, I'm, I'm paraphrasing for sure, but it was um, get the content done and out there. Yeah. Something along Speed those lines. Speed to market. Yeah, and for me that was uh, something that really helped during my experience with it, with knowing it's a double-edged sword. If you don't have quality content or a little bit of polish or just some kind of professionalism or, yeah. or quality to whatever you're doing, i.e. My, my lackluster original videos, um, if you don't put that, people aren't going to stay when they do find you and you're really fighting for the people to find you. It's, it's so much of that double-sided coin, right? So on one side, like you said, you want to make the quality content, yeah. but at the other side, minimize revisions. Get mm -hmm. it out to market as Absolutely. fast as you can. We were talking about ums earlier. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. say one or two ums and you miss it, people aren't, they're not going to focus in on that. Absolutely. They don't care about that small stuff. Yeah. We care about that because we're watching it, we're critiquing, That's right. we're we our own worst critics. Yeah. But hey, the audience isn't looking for that. They're looking for the value out of the content you're creating. And make it make it as good as you can, as fast as you can, I believe is what I said. Yeah, there you go. Out to yeah. market yeah. with speed. And that parallels something. It was going through those YouTube channels and finding well, maybe what's working or trying to dissect what uh, some of the bigger channels have done and how they grew and going back through their yeah. archive videos. Uh, I, I caught it wind of it and it was something very similar it was like done is better than perfect. And right away that clicked it. with me and it was okay. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece. It's maybe one day it'll get in front of 250,000 people, but for the next year or so, let's just get it out there and see what it can do. And sure enough, some of those are the ones that, that pop and, and yeah. take you to the next level. So that, that helped me with being able to push a little more consistently and not dwell on, you know, it has to be perfect before I, I get it out there. It doesn't, it's just We're on the same page, automate right? that machine, um, get it moving. And when you can kind of, your motivation is like, to me, the reason I want to be a YouTuber because, or I want to be successful in business because, yeah. um, that's the motivation. I guess the drive comes from taking that motivation, saying this is understanding what you need to do to meet your result, and then making sure that no matter if you don't feel it, that drive kicks in. You're going to do it anyway, and get if comfortable doing, with the uncomfortable. If you're doing what you love and it makes you happy, it's going to translate into success in some way. Absolutely. Well, however you define success, I think it, it doesn't matter. But success will come if you're doing yeah. what you love and you're happy about it. So the new career. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, it's uh, it's been, uh, I'm in the automotive industry. I'm currently a, a pre-owned sales manager at a dealership here in town, a high-end luxury store. Yeah. And uh, it's been an absolute game changer for me as far as, you know, what I've been able to get out of out of working yeah. and uh, and the freedom that that's allowed me to kind of further. And it's, it's interesting. It was not something I was interested in getting into. Yeah automotive industry sales it wasn't even on my radar at yeah. the time um and because of the time with youtube and the time spent i'm definitely uh humbled walking in here i'm not a, a social media seo guru by yeah. any means but i knew my way around it a little bit um i had seen an ad coming back from extended travels being a you know bearded yeah artist living in an rv in the woods with his wife yeah <laughs> um, coming back to reality and saying okay i gotta get the next step I want to try out my life started and it was backing into what I thought was uh, a digital media type job for content creation and managing um, very basic internet stuff. Uh, it turns out that was a sales position uh, yeah. so I had misinterpreted the ad but I kind of backed into getting to know um, an amazing group of people that, that took a shot on me and uh, never really looked back. I kind of used everything that I had been chasing for passion, which is like creating videos yeah. and dabbling a bit with uh, YouTube and, and doing these different things. I kind of segued that into my new position and it was the perfect cross section of chasing these passions from YouTube to these other things that cumulatively uh, give me a big boost at, at this position. And um, I've, I've grown with that company since. It's been a, a really good ride. And the only downside to it is, is kind of shifting. I have a passion for what I do, but yeah. it's shifting 
from that passion for art into something else and then making peace with the fact that it's okay to like still have passion for everything you got to find the way to separate out of it well there's you can find yeah i find we say this a lot now we we call creating good digital content digital artistry because yep. you're trans you're transforming physical art into a digital form and if you can do that now that digital art or that digital artistry is transpired across all social platforms and that's what's creating good content for brands so for you now i mean you're, you're working with nice luxury cars yeah you can see still the artistic beauty of those cars and transpire that into the everyday Absolutely. and you're selling that now yep. and uh you know we've done work together i'm yeah. um, showcasing the product that that we sell and it, it truly is it's for me it was i started doing the videos that we now work with you guys on to make sure our, you know our, our yeah. quality is as high as it can be and, and we're freed up to do other things um but you know i think uh i find it amazing too because because working with you on videos is so easy you're you're good on camera you're quick to get that script yeah. together and it's amazing i think how life life moves you around that right your youtube experience now and the new career what you're chasing is, is playing a factor now yeah it's feeding into you know and it it came from a a point of passion it's always going to be something that's going to be you know i want to be creating stuff i want to be doing videos and whatnot and, and to transition you're right it's a transferable skill set and yeah. and if you kind of just follow that excitement compass that's going to lead you from opportunity to opportunity you're going to get all the benefit of everything you learned and we're passionate about up to that point so it's nice this show is all about talking about one of your favorite quotes what's what's a quote that sticks with you what is what is one of those things that you can kind of live by it's uh i'm, I'm paraphrasing a bit i think the actual quote is get comfortable with being uncomfortable um i had to research the source of it yeah. it's actually a navy seals quote from what i nice. can gather um, which is not, you know, I'm not yeah. a, a militant person as far as even like regimented routine and I'm yeah. kind of go with the flow type guy, but that always stuck with me because it's always a barrier um, from childhood on. I've been chasing the next passion, yeah. trying to get good at it, um, satisfying myself in some way with... But you're not going to learn or be able to chase that unless you're a little bit uncomfortable. Because if, if you're always comfortable, then you're, you're static. Yeah. You're not moving, right? So you need to stay stay up to speed what's this one uh, mary andretti we had someone here that said if everything seems under control you're not going <laughs> fast enough right it's That's kind good. of the yep. same thing absolutely you got to keep moving keep learning and then yeah those, those moments too that are gonna benefit you the most are the ones you're like mm, i don't want to do that yeah. like i know i i should i know that opportunity's there but like you know going around work hey we need some guys to film a video you'll have guys who are just they, they can't hide <laughs> yeah fast enough um, from wanting to do that and then you'll have the guys who you can tell would be interested but are scared to put themselves out there that's one example but it's anything it's that challenge that's next that scares the crap out of you and if uh you really weigh your options and you're still thinking about that thing it's a good sign that you should probably do it get comfortable with the uncomfortable jump into it and you'll probably come out um, having learned something, right? Can't agree Winner more. Learn. Can't agree more, yeah. Mike. So Q, let's get uh, Mike's YouTube channel at the bottom. Let's get the tag there. And Mike, thank you for coming out. Absolute it's been a pleasure. Blast. Thanks so much. Thank you.